relative late arrival to World War II, the M24 Chaffee showed in many war movies and was in use well after the war. The M24 was developed as a replacement for the M3 Stuart as the experiences in North Africa showed the flaws of the M3, especially the 37mm gun which had a good enough performance when the war broke out but was found to be too weak as newer German armor arrived to the battlefield. The plan to replace the M2 and M3 light tanks came as early as 1940, but the M24 production only started in 1944. And to see why it took so long, we need to go back and look at the failure of the first design which was meant to replace the light tanks, the T7. In 1941, specifications were put out for a new light tank to replace the original M2 and M3 models. It had to have a maximum weight of 14 tons, mounting the 37mm gun, a relatively low silhouette and at least 38mm of armor. In short, the plan was to have a small and fast light tank, with the armor and firepower comparable to a medium tank. This was the light tank T7 project. Several variations were built to try different armor and gun combinations. The original prototype was called T7 with a welded hull and with a similar turret to the M3 Lee and the 37mm gun. The T7 E1 variant was built with a riveted hull but was never finished. The T7 E2 variant had a welded hull, used the right radial engine and mounted a British 6-pounder 57mm gun. This variant showed the most potential. The T7 E3 and E4 variants were similar to the E2 but used different engine types, one using twin diesel engines, the other twin Cadillac petrol engines. The T7 E5 identical to the E2 but using the 75mm M3 gun. Over the development, the armor thickness was also changed to 63mm on the front. With that and bigger guns installed, the T7 actually got so heavy it was no longer a light tank. Its new designation was M7 medium tank, as it weighed around 27 tons. While the T7 trials were still in progress, 3000 units were ordered of this tank in December 1942. But at that time, the M4 Shermans were already in production and it was realized that the M7 is not needed at all. The M4 was a better choice, so the project was cancelled with more than two years wasted. Now we know why the M24 was so late to the war. So let's take a look at the actual development process. In April 1943, again new specifications were issued for a light tank, which was meant to use the same powertrain as the M5A1, but mounts the 75mm gun. Cadillac started working on a new project designated Light Tank T24. The T24 used the drivetrain from the M5 light tank and to keep the weight down the armor was quite thin, between 25 and 38 mm. To be able to mount the 75 mm cannon they used the lightweight M6 variant, which was a version of the gun used on the B25 Mitchell bombers. This gun had the same characteristics as the regular M3 75 mm, but used a thinner barrel and some different parts to save weight. The first prototype of the T24 was completed in October 1943, and it was a success, got its final designation as M24 light tank, and Ordnance immediately ordered 1000 units, and later the order was raised to 5000. The M24 was a big leap over earlier light tanks, it used modern torsion bar suspension, a welded hull, and with the 75mm gun, vastly improved firepower. The M24 mounts the 75mm M6 cannon, two 30 caliber machine guns, one in the hull and one in the turret as coaxial, and one 50 caliber machine gun for anti-aircraft role. The 75mm gun on a light tank was a great upgrade over the 37mm used earlier. To keep the weight down and in the given maximum of 18 tons, the M24 had relatively thin armor. It had 25mm of armor on the hull front and 19 to 25mm on the hull sides. The turret had 38mm of thickness on the front and 25mm on the sides. The M24 used twin Cadillac V8 engines, putting out 220 horsepower, giving the tank a maximum road speed of 35 miles an hour. T24, the original prototype. T24 E1 was a prototype with the Continental Radial Engine. It had better performance than the M24, but had problems, so it got cancelled. M19 Multiple Gun Motor Carriage. 
This is a lengthened M24 hull with the engine on the center and twin 40mm Bofors anti-aircraft guns. 904 were ordered, but only 285 were completed by the end of World War II. M37 105mm howitzer motor carriage. As the name suggests, these mounted 105mm howitzer. They saw service in the Korean War as well. M41 howitzer motor carriage. These mounted 155mm howitzer also seen service in the Korean War. T-77 multiple gun motor carriage. These were anti-aircraft vehicles, mounting six 50 caliber machine guns in a turret. The M-24 arrived late in Europe by the end of 1944, during the Battle of the Bulge. They started to replace the M-3 and M-5 light tanks, but they were slow to get to the frontline units. Many light tank companies didn't receive M24s until the end of the war and used M3 light tanks all the way to the end. The reports on the M24 performance were generally positive as it had better performance than the M3 or M5. The light armor made it vulnerable to basically any anti-tank weaponry, but the 75mm gun was a well received upgrade, especially because of the much better high explosive runs to support the infantry. The United States deployed many M24s to Japan during the occupation as they were more suited to the narrow roads and bridges of the country. They also seen action in the Korean War, where at first it was used as a main tank for the forces, but they suffered heavy losses fighting against the much heavier armored and armed T-3485s. Later the heavier Sherman and Pershing tanks were deployed to fight the enemy armor and the M24 went back to reconnaissance role. France used a lot of M24s after World War II, deployed them in the Indochina War and also used them in Algeria. The last known combat action for M24s was during the Indo-Pakistani War in 1971. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and in the comments let me know if there's any interesting events or vehicles you'd like to see.